Welcome to this week's Norris World Report. I'm Emily Sisk. Tonight we'll give you the details on Monday's solar eclipse, changes in sports leadership, and the unlikely escape of an equine animal. All this along with NKU news and entertainment coming up. In breaking news, football superstar OJ Simpson died on Thursday after battling prostate cancer. While Simpson earned fortune and fame on the football field, his legacy was changed when his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, was found brutally murdered in June 1994. Simpson became a person of interest, then infamously led police on a chase throughout Los Angeles in his Ford Bronco. An estimated 95 million people watched the drama on live television. Simpson was charged with the murder of his ex-wife, and his trial on television became known as the trial of the century. The criminal court found the football player not guilty for the murder, but a separate civil case found him liable. Simpson played 11 seasons in the NFL, most of them with the Buffalo Bills. He scored 76 touchdowns and played in five Pro Bowls. He also had five children. Simpson died in Las Vegas, Nevada at the age of 76. Millions across North America experienced a nearly once-in-a-lifetime celestial occurrence on Monday as the moon crossed paths with the sun, turning day into night. Ivan Rodriguez is in Caribou, Texas, in the path of totality for the historic solar event. A breathtaking cosmic event witnessed by millions of Americans from as far south as Texas to the Midwest and the Northeast. Awe on the faces of children and adults alike as the moon blocked the sun, briefly casting the earth in darkness. Day turns to night. Animals start to behave differently. We're seeing changes in the earth's atmosphere. It's a mystical, mysterious experience. It's an event as rare as it is beautiful, with the sun's corona visible only to those lucky enough to be in the path of totality. We're the only planet in the solar system that this is true for. The, the apparent size of the moon in our sky is the same as the apparent size of the sun in the sky. In the hours leading up to the eclipse, communities hosted parties to celebrate their geographic good fortune. It'll be amazing. A once in a lifetime opportunity, that's for sure. Scientists taking advantage of those precious three to four minutes to unlock more clues into our planet and beyond. Better understanding what's happening at the corona at the start of the action uh, helps us to not only model and predict what could happen in the future, but better protect our spacecraft from space weather events and life on Earth, like our power grids and our communication systems. The science, the spectacle, the serenity of the moment, a once-in-a-lifetime event. The next total solar eclipse visible from the contiguous United States will occur in August of 2044. In Kerrville, Texas, I'm Ivan Rodriguez. In the region were able to experience the eclipse, with northern Kentucky being in the 99th percentile of totality. Monday was certainly a memorable day for our region, but some Ohioans wanted to take the memorability a step further. Many couples took the opportunity during Monday's solar eclipse to say I do. One event in Tiffin, Ohio was even named Elope at the Eclipse. It took place at the Frost Canal Amphitheater and attracted nearly 200 couples who wanted to get married during a rare celestial occurrence or just renew their vows. Let's hope their unions are out of this world. Now that the eclipse is over, you may be wondering what to do with your eclipse glasses. There are a number of organizations that recycle or reuse them. Astronomers Without Borders has been accepting donations of eclipse glasses for 15 years. They partner with organizations where you can drop off or mail your used glasses, including retailers like Warby Parker. You can also send them to Eclipse Glasses USA, which repurposes used glasses for future celestial events. Or you could pack your glasses away for the next major eclipse in 20 years. Another rare event is coming, but this one you'll have to look down for. The cicadas are emerging soon, and there could be more of them than the world has seen in 200 years. According to experts, some trillion cicadas will start appearing in May and live for about six weeks as part of a dual emergence. For the first time since 1803, two specific groups of cicadas will appear at the same time. People living in the Midwest and the Southeast will be able to experience the rare event. After they emerge and molt, the males will start buzzing to find a mate and the noise can be louder than a plane. The cicadas will eventually die off and it will be another 221 years before the two groups appear together again. In global news, President Joe Biden hosted the Japanese Prime Minister for a visit on Wednesday. At a state dinner Wednesday night, Biden celebrated the alliance between the U.S. and Japan, saying they will continue to be partners amid a changing world. Came of age as our countries were, as they came together. We both remember the choices that were made to forge a friendship that were once only a devastating a fight that existed before. 
Japan gifted 3,000 cherry trees to the U.S. more than 100 years ago as a symbol of their alliance. The cherry trees blossom each spring in Washington, D.C. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis said he's putting his support behind Donald Trump and he plans to fundraise for his former presidential rival. That's what two sources had told CNN. DeSantis reportedly made comments to donors and supporters at an appreciation retreat over the weekend. One person who attended the retreat said DeSantis seems committed to helping Trump and they will follow his lead. The appreciation retreat was for large donors, major fundraisers, and finance committee members of the DeSantis campaign. Upon ending his bid for the White House in January, DeSantis endorsed Trump in the Republican primary, but he has not appeared with the former president at any campaign events since. It's a significant change of heart for the Florida governor, who spent millions trying to dethrone Trump as the presumptive GOP nominee. And now let's take it over to Cole to see what's coming up in entertainment. Thank you, Emily. Tonight, I will give you the details on how Beyonce is making history. This week's Hollywood Minute and a look at the final theater production of NKU's School of the Arts season. When we come back. I never knew when I would have to move, so I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Dad? Just one minute, okay? Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome to this week's North Media Entertainment Report. I'm Cole. Beyonce is making music history again. She became the first black woman to top the country album chart with her new release, Act Two, Cowboy Carter. The new collection of songs also tops the Billboard 200 albums chart. That is the eighth time Beyonce has achieved that feat. Two months ago, she has also made history when one of her debut singles from her new album, Texas Hold'em, captured the top spot on Billboard's Hot Country Songs chart. Documentaries and feature films both bring true stories to the big screen in different ways. Today's entertainment report features a trio of previews for such movies. Here's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Three brothers, Brian, Dennis, and Carl, a cousin Mike Love, and our good friend El Jardine. That's a family to me. The Endless Summer returns with The Beach Boys. The documentary features never-before-seen footage and new interviews with band members and other music luminaries. It'll be fun, fun, fun when The Beach Boys debuts on Disney+. Plus. How about that? Joe, Joe, Joe! Where'd you learn to hit like that? How would you boys like to be the first members of the San Felipe High School golf team? <laughs> Us. Latino caddies buck the one crow discrimination of the 1950s and take the course in the long game. 
Jay Hernandez and Dennis Quaid star in the golf drama based on a true story. The long game opens in theaters Friday. So you all uh, current military or are you vets? Army all the way. Trail name's Bacon. I'm Army. Trail name's Peanut. I'm a Marine. Trail name's Mini Me. How about you? Well, I'm Army, but uh, I don't have a trail name yet. Oh, don't worry. Your trail name will find you. The Keeper tells the story of George Eshelman, who hiked the Appalachian Trail to raise awareness of military member suicides, carrying the name tapes of 363 service members who died by suicide. The film follows George as he tries to complete his mission and keep steps ahead of his own dangerous depression. The Keeper opens in theaters May 24th, Memorial Day weekend. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. NKU School, NKU is School of the Arts is bringing a side-splitting show to the stage. The play that goes wrong is the school's final theater production of the 2023-2024 season. This farce, written by Henry Lewis, Jonathan Slayer, and Henry Shields, tells the tale of Cornley University drama Society's new set production. The murder at Haversham Manor on their opening night where everything that could go wrong does. Directed by Ken Jones, this play within a play will have you aching with laughter at a corpse that can't play dead. Actors who trip over everything, including their lines and so much more. The play that goes wrong, open Thursday, April 11th at the Carnegie Theater in Covington and runs on selected days until Saturday, April 20th. For more information about the show and how to purchase tickets, go to nku.edu slash tickets. That's it for what's happening in entertainment this week. Now it's back to Emily with the news. Sounds great. Thank you, Cole. In NKU News, women's basketball head coach Cameron Whitaker Boltz has left the university as of last Friday. The Northerner covered the details of her departure. It was alleged at the end of March that Coach Volts was being investigated by the university after complaints from former players. Documents from Human Resources showed that a de detailed investigation was conducted on the coach following claims of racist and homophobic remarks, as well as a degradation of players' mental health. The university claimed Volts did not violate any harassment or non-discrimination policies. However, on April 5th, NKU announced that it had, quote, mutually agreed with the coach that it was time for a change in leadership. The university will pay the coach over $250,000 in agreement for her to step down. Volts has been at NKU since 2016 and will leave the university with a 95 and 106 record. NKU will begin searching for a new head coach immediately. In other university news, Fuel NKU, a campus resource that offers free food for all students, is imparting a bring your own bag policy to cut down on waste. Aya Alele of The Northerner reported on the story. In an effort to increase the resource's sustainability efforts, students who visit Fuel NKU must bring in their own bags. Program director Nick Blevins said the resource hopes to eliminate the usage of plastic bags. They encourage students to keep a reusable bag in their car, backpack, or locker, and remember their efforts are making a difference for the environment. More than 140 people visit Fuel NKU each day. Authorities in Ohio have released body cam vid video from a shooting earlier this month. Akron police were responding to a call about someone pointing a gun at homes, which turned out to be a 15-year-old boy with a fake gun. Tara Morgan has more details and speaks to the teen's grandmother. The shooting happens in just seconds. Can I see your hands real quick? Oh, hey, it's fake, it's fake. Shots fired, shots fired. It's fake, it's fake, it's fake. The Akron officer showed up on Britton Road near Ottawa Avenue the evening of April 1st after a 911 call about a guy pointing a gun at homes. He pulled it out and was like acting like he was going to shoot their houses um, as he was walking by. Karen Robinson is the grandmother of 15-year-old Tavion Kuntz Williams, the teen who was shot. Robinson says her grandson is out of the hospital with his mom but can hardly sleep. And I'm angry very angry that my grandson has to go through this for the rest of his life. In the video released by the city of Akron, while screaming in pain and with blood running down his wrist, you can hear the teen tell officers he was coming from his cousin's funeral and his granny lives down the street. 
I'm a good kid, bro. I get A's in school. I play football. The teen says over and over, the gun is a fake. In a portion of the video edited by the city of Akron, a red circle is used to highlight something that's hard to make out. He has no understanding. He feels like he did something wrong. Police are not talking about the shooting. The attorney for Tavion's family says the teen was shot while unarmed with his hands up, doing everything he possibly could have done to be safe. Robinson spoke with her grandson she described as a fun kid. I believe that he was uh, just being a boy. We are not naming the officer since he has not been charged or disciplined in the shooting. According to his personnel file, the officer was fired in July 2021 for several policy violations, including for a time when he was extremely drunk while off duty and muzzling a gun at his girlfriend and admitted he did similar things while in Florida. The officer got his job back months later and given his original 71 day suspension for the violations. Robinson wants to see a charge filed for shooting her grandson. Why? It wasn't necessary. Officials say the nine-year veteran officer who was involved has been placed on paid leave. The Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation will investigate. 38 train cars derailed in East Palestine, Ohio in February 2023, sending a fury of fire and smoke into the environment. Now Norfolk Southern Railroad Company has reached a $600 million settlement that would resolve all class action lawsuits within 20 miles of its East Palestine derailment. The settlement is intended to offset costs related to the accident that sent a plume of toxic smoke into the air and displaced many people. More than a million pounds of hazardous chemicals were spilled into the soil, water, and air. State and federal environmental, environmental officials say testing shows the town is now safe, but some people still complain of burning eyes, tingling lips, swollen lymph, lymph nodes, and heaviness in their chest. As part of the settlement, those who live within 10 miles of the derailment can receive additional compensation. The settlement still needs to be approved by a court. As part of the settlement, the railroad company will not admit to any wrongdoing or liability. Now we'll take it to Jacob to hear what's coming up in sports. Thanks, Emily. Updates on softball and baseball teams, coaching change in college basketball, and women's and men's national champions. These topics and more coming to you next on the NKU Sports Break. I don't remember how it started. Start the back. Oh Our back and forth. It always came back. Nice kick. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. Welcome to the NKU Sports Break. I'm your host, Jacob Staley. The NKU baseball team won their last game against Ohio on Tuesday, winning 11-8. Their next game is a home game against Wright State 
Friday at 2. They moved to 21-11 and 11 on the season. NKU softball team played a doubleheader and won both games against IUPUI, winning the first game 7-3 and the second game 6-4. Their next game is another doubleheader against Robert Morris at 1 and 3 Saturday at NKU. They moved to 16-12 and 12 on the season. John Calipari is the new Arkansas Razorbacks men's head coach, uh, men's head basketball coach. Calipari landed in Fayetteville on Wednesday and was greeted by a crowd of fans at the airport. From there, more well wishes as he headed for a news conference that where the university un officially announced the 65-year-old's hiring. The Naismith Hall of Famer signed a five-year contract with a salary that begins at $7 million a season. The previous day, Calipari stepped down as head coach after 15 years. He led the Wildcats program to a 2012 NCAA championship. Women's and men's NCAA tournaments wrapped up this week with South Carolina beating Iowa 87-75. This game averaged 19 million viewers, making it the first time in history that the women's final had more viewership than the men's final. Moving to the men's final, UConn beat Purdue 75-60, to winning back-to-back -back national champions. That'll do it for this week's edition of the NKU Sports Break. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you back here next week. Back to Emily with the news. Thanks, Jacob. More than two dozen real-life Rosie the Riveters received a Congressional Gold Medal on Wednesday. 27 to be exact. The nation's highest civilian honor comes some 80 years after the women's efforts working in U.S. factories and shipyards while the men were fighting World War II. Speaker Mike Johnson presented the awards to the women for their long overdue moment of recognition. The Rosies are all at least 90 years old now, one as old as 106, and they traveled from all over the United States to attend the ceremony in Washington, D.C. The Rosie the Riveter Trust funded their trips. A subway station gets an unexpected visit from a four-legged thoroughbred friend, turning the commuter train service into the Pony Express. Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. A horse walks into a subway station, right? Oh, it's not a joke. It actually happened in Australia when an escaped racehorse showed up at a New South Wales rail station spurring quite a scene. Commuters were forced to hold their horses travel-wise when the animal showed up, all gussied up, and giddy up up and down the platform. Authorities with Transport for NSW, which shared the video, said the unexpected visitor did exhibit a bit of horseplay in the station, uh, but in its defense, it did appear to follow protocol staying behind the yellow safety line. Eventually, the horse was led topside where it was loaded onto a transport and returned to its owner, reportedly in stable condition. <laughs> you see, it is funny because a horse lives in a stable, huh? huh? Historical experts certainly weren't horsing around when they went to great lengths to painstakingly restore this 2,000-year-old Roman soldier helmet found in an English field. The restoration effort to return the age-old Halitan helmet to its former glory, or as closely as the ravages of time would allow, took years of meticulous work by conservators at London's British Museum after it was found buried in the dirt and initially mistaken for a rusty bucket some 20 years ago. The result is an impressive restoration they say is 80% complete. But they also took it a step further using 3D scanning and printing technology to produce a stunning replica of the ornate helmet to accompany the original, giving a clear idea of what the hulking headpiece once looked like in all its gladiator-esque gleaming glory. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. And that will do it for today's North World Report. You can find us on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Northerner Media, and at NKU World Report. Thanks for tuning in, and stay classy, NKU.